Welcome to the Too Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle. I am a former New York Mafia princess, originally from Austria. Queen, I am the mother of three. Marcella's the princess. The owner of Too Posh Boutique. And here with my beautiful co host, Marcella, my daughter. Hello, I'm Marcella. I'm a dancer, choreographer, model, and designer for Too Posh. And Fitness I say whatever teacher. the teacher. Hi, my name is Educator. Cruz. I am a stylist. I also own the Society Salon in the Design oh. District, and I am a short little Mexican with a big personality. I'm Polly. Oh, I'm okay. a health consultant and educator, former professional dominatrix, currently working at the largest adult dominatrix. Store Where in is she? I'm handle. interested. What will they say She's next? Welcome different. to the Two Posh Podcast. But we call her <laughs> Justin Johnson, our finally. <laughs> Finally, but also our 300th guest, Ooh. celebrity guest, our most important guest we have ever had on the show. We're so grateful you're here. She apologizes to every other guest before me. <laughs> no. See, we have a special bond. Thank you so very much. And congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. 300 guests and shows y'all been sharing a lot of secrets a lot of stories yeah. a lot of secrets a lot of stories and i am so excited because your story is so incredibly big and large and all the things that you have done and accomplished is actually mind-boggling to me i've known you now for several years and i feel so connected to you always have mm -hmm. we Met at a dance competition. Justin <laughs> owns Beyond Belief Dance Company. And when we had prestige, we would see each other at competitions and we got along the best. We just love <laughs> Absolute each other. best. <laughs> I, I always looked forward to seeing you guys at competitions because not only did I appreciate your work, Marcella. Yeah. But I loved the energy backstage. I loved the glamour <laughs> that y'all brought on and off stage. Yeah. And that's something rare that, you know. Well, I think that's how we connected because mm -hmm. you're the exact same. So <laughs> well, I remember that I, I couldn't, his props, his work is so <laughs> entertaining. And if I saw that they were there, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah, we'd be this so is going to be the best weekend. And I remember very specifically, there was one competition your name was on there, but then you guys weren't there. I was so disappointed. I was <laughs> like, oh my God. I I mean, who knows where I was in the world? It's yeah, like, where's exactly. Waldo? Where's Justin? Um, I just also loved the healthy competitiveness because I yes. feel like here in Dallas, Fort Worth, it's like the mini Olympics to a lot of these dance studio owners. And for us, it was just us sharing our love, our work, our mm -hmm. art. Of course, we're all in it to win it. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the win can be like, I feel like for me, meeting, you know, you lovely ladies, mm. I could say now that are like friends slash family. Yes. And that's important. It's so important. And I found it just amazing that the path that then happened. But we're going to yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Okay, come on. <laughs> but first, I wanted to have you please share your amazing story from how you grew up, um, your family, mm -hmm. a little bit because it is amazing. Yeah. It's uh, it's always funny when I get asked to share this because uh, it, I, I think back to being like younger Justin and I was, this is going to be very hard to believe, but um, I was a very shy, introverted um, child, a queer child in Mesquite, Texas, home <laughs> of the rodeo, the barbecue, and now Alyssa Edwards. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you, uh, you know, I grew up in the quintessential Southern family. I'm one of seven. Um, you know, I have a shocking. father who is very masculine, uh, believes boys were blue, girls were pink. And then there's me, his first son with my mom. So there was that dynamic and, and, um, me navigating through my childhood. I, I will say though, I, I did have a fun childhood for what it was worth. I mean, you know, my p family was just like, my dad was a contractor, my mom stayed at home with all of us. Um, not a lot of education. And I think that we had to learn to get creative. So I had four sisters. So that was like a small dance company. And uh, they always listened to me, which I'm thankful for. I was a natural born leader. Uh, and we, we played school. I was the principal. Didn't want to be the teacher, the principal. And if we played grocery store, I was the manager. Of course. Yeah. So like... 
I had fun. We got creative. I, I remember like, you know, playing glamour shots and nail salon and all of this with my siblings, uh, hard rock cafe. I'd put together little like productions and my <laughs> granny would watch, but, um, it, it, it definitely is now as, you know, I, I look at this, it, it's a trick of fate because I never seen any of this coming. I don't think I ever sought it out. I think I just was always a hopeful kid that was eager and full of life, but <clears throat> I didn't know how to navigate. Um, well, I, I don't think I had a compass. <laughs> there was really no um, support that could put me on the right path. But I'm very fortunate. My grandmother moved me into her home and uh, I was allowed to be my authentic How self. Old were you? I would say um, officially 13. Um, you know, it was just very hard with my dad, very hard with his family. Like, I remember, oh my gosh, for all the listeners, if his family hears this, they're going to like be terribly upset with me no not really because it, here's the thing it, it, it's it's a part it's of the story um i remember his uh they're from alabama mississippi okay so imagine more that. southern uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly <laughs> and um i remember one of his siblings like referring to me as a sissy and i didn't really know what that meant so i wasn't too bothered but my mother was she was very affected by that and she's like don't call him that um and so then i i just remember taking that word and in and referring to it as like a bad or or negative okay um and that was very complex for my mother to have to endure my father was a very aggressive man and she was less than i mean that was how i I remember my childhood, you know, my dad, whatever he said, went uh -huh. and she would submit to that. And it was like she was never taken seriously. And it was I was a mama's boy. So <clears throat> I also I uh, caught my father cheating on my mother. Once I went to work with him, I was like nine years old. The elevator opens. There's this lady. Her, her top is undone. Her breasts are out. I'm mortified. Oh I'm like, God. oh my God. And um, of course, I go home and report live from the scene. <laughs> um, and, you know, that there was a wedge early on. So mm. it was just very hard. My father, he was not equipped to raise a child like me. And um, the ironic thing is, let's fast forward lots of years. Um, I weathered the storm. Um, I was not born to blend in. Uh, no. <laughs> but I, I did. I did. I said, listen, th the world, I, I gathered really quickly about like 13, 14, okay, you're different. <laughs> there, there wasn't a RuPaul's Drag Race. There wasn't other people like me on television. Um, I got to go to uh, the local dance studio in Mesquite, Texas, Joy Sharp School of Dance. And that was my happy place. So I had my two classes a week. How, I, how did your dad feel about that? Uh, he, 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 at this point, he'd kind of like given up. Okay. okay? Um, he did try the football thing with me after two broken arms. My grandmother was not having it anymore. We tried the baseball. Um, I remember getting beat up by the damn ball in a batting cage. It just was not my thing, right? Yeah, so yeah. he wanted me to be the all-American boy, and it just was Wasn't not enough. in my cards. But right. but little did he know, he helped craft the all-American queen. But uh, right. <laughs> And so, like, um, it, you know... I just, I went to West Mesquite High School, home of the Fighting Wranglers. And so I just, I just stuck to myself and my two dance classes and my granny. And I really was a happy kid. Um, and then it was like, wow, okay. <laughs> With 32, life would really take a, a curve. I skipped a lot because I opened my dance school. I'm very proud to say that I'm celebrating 20 years this it's year. It's amazing. Wow, congratulations. Um, I mean, that is that is a milestone, Marcelli. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know how you no, do it. It's a huge <laughs> That is milestone. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I mean, it, I, it is unbelievable because I I want to talk about that for a minute because um, I don't I don't talk about this story enough. Like. I believe it truly was a gift from God. Um, I was a teaching um, 
a dance team, actually, at a ballet school where the owner was diagnosed with MS. And um, she was no longer to teach. The studio was actually moving out. We were getting ready for nationals. And the landlord of the building um, came and he approached me. Um, I was standing there with a group of moms and he said, you know, I see you here every Sunday and you seem to be a very passionate person about this. <laughs> Like, they're moving out. Are you interested in possibly taking over this building? I didn't know anything about business. Here I am. I mean, I'm, I'm young, and I'm trying to figure out my life. And How old were you? I mean, at this point, I would probably say 21. That is wow. young. Yeah, to own a business, and, and, and you don't even have the slightest idea. No. I did have a passion, a passion that I was willing to fight for. So before I could say yes or no... My earth angel, Michelle Sherrard, um, one of my students' mother, she said yes. And she um, was the president of Bill Bank at the time. Um, she also owned a, um, they had like a, what are those things, like those trailers that you can hook up to the back of the truck? They had one of these spaces she owned, um, very successful lady. She said, um, he goes, well, look, if you got $1,000, the building's yours. She wrote a check that day. Wow. Oh and a thousand dollars for me back That's then. A lot. That you is a lot of money, by the way, FYI. Yeah. Um, I'm not that bougie, but um that was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be in debt forever. Yeah. A thousand dollar loan. Like right like, now you feel it's attainable, but back then it was like it wow. was not for me. Here I I mean, listen, I mean, I'm just gonna keep it real. I mean, at this point I was driving like, I mean, a car that barely barely started. <laughs> um, but you know, um, I, I remember being so grateful. I jumped right into it. I lived at the studio. I really lived there. Like and literally? Like, not literally, uh, but, but literally. literally. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, Wake you know, up, Marcella, go, yeah. And don't leave. I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave. I would, I wanted to stay there. And it was, um, that was your baby. How many kids? I worked was my that? ass off too. I, I remember I started with like maybe, 30, 40, and then the next season doubled. Oh, wow. That's and we were lot. doing more like dance team competitions yeah. um, where it was like very competitive with precision. And I didn't do like high school drill team and all of these things. So I had to learn, oh my gosh, okay, well, they need to wear the same makeup, have the same earrings, like everything needs to be in line. Military. It was, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it, it just, I mean, it really took off. And I'm so proud of that. I'm so thank you, Michelle Sherrard, if you are listening to this. <laughs> uh, I will forever um, be grateful and in debt to you. And she's still a part of my life. She came to my show and yeah. she's just like Justin. I mean, her daughter is long yeah. married and a woman that they look at me like family. Of and course. so I'm very fortunate that where I didn't have... Um, I had abundance, you know, where it might not have happened at home, but I believe family doesn't always have to be blood. No, 100%. one million. I've met so many people along my yellow brick road mm -hmm. that, um, you well, have been poppies, the distraction, but I've met these characters that have um, linked arms with me and um, believed in this magical Oz <laughs> and... Um, have supported and celebrated me, and Michelle's one of them. So, I, I so I had amazing. the studio, and then here I am. It's like I get this call to be on a reality television show, and, and how and, did that happen though? Because okay. that is really cool. So let me let me take a little sip. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are people watching us too? Yes. yes. Oh oh uh, oh. Okay, uh, so y'all know. All right. Oh, we're on YouTube. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Um, I started doing drag, but my my drag character was something so, that so dance came first and then drag. Dance came, came drag, yes. Uh, dance first, then drag, and <laughs> I and thought it was had so the funny. Studio, right? When I had the studio, yes, but I was really like the real life Hannah Montana of Mesquite. I mean, I didn't want anyone to know because I felt like I would be judged. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially at that time, like I said, in um, the dance studio, exactly. And in Mesquite, <laughs> I didn't want people to think, "Oh my gosh, I'm taking my child here." Right. You know, and I grew up in a Baptist church, and I loved going to church. Um, is my mine and my granny's favorite thing to do, um, and. But I know the judgment of that area. We went to West Mesquite Baptist Church, West Mesquite wow. High School, everything. And so, um, 
You know, I made a promise to myself, though, at 18 that I would leave Mesquite, that I would outgrow <laughs> this. Like, I, I knew that there was another world for me. I knew. I knew. And this is before we all had a handheld remote to the world. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm not old. I'm established. I say that in every interview, every chance I get because I have to remind myself. Thank you, everybody on YouTube. Um, but uh, I knew there would be something bigger for me. I didn't know what, where. What like I said, I, there was no compass. Uh, but I was trusting that. And I was, I was filled with faith. And um, I was steadfast. And I was a hard worker. And then um, Shangela got on um, RuPaul's Drag Race. After she backup dancing for me the year I won Miss U.S. I'm not bragging. I'm just speaking Oh, no. Fast. This is... This <laughs> is was a huge deal. <laughs> a huge deal. I won Miss uh, USA in 2006 and Miss America in 2010. And um, I was Miss Texas. And she was a backup dancer. And I did it for fun. I actually sometimes felt guilty that I... What if I'm taking away from the kids and the company? And like... But I needed to do something for me to express my creative outlet. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I knew at a very young age I wanted to be a, um, a choreographer. I wanted to be like the magic man, the Steven Spielberg behind the scenes that was creating these like powerful stories. I wanted to do the makeup, the hair, design the costumes, the props, the set, everything. Um, and I was living that. So for me, I was I felt my life was fulfilled. I thought I have it all. I, I, I've always dreamt of a studio and then. Next thing I know, I'm on damn TV. <laughs> so in this timeline, you were da you were um, you had the studio. How did you get into drag? When in the timeline did you get into drag? I wanted to ask that. Too. Okay, so um, good question because I think I'm skipping a lot because like I, I know there's other things we're gonna chat about. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to keep you in place. <laughs> thank you, thank no, you. We just I was so I'm interested in so much. I have so I many questions. I've ever known this. So I went to my very first gay bar at, um, and you were out, you, you, you were like, okay, I'm, I'm out already. Well, I don't really know if I was ever in, but, uh, <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know no, no, I'm just joking. Here's that. the thing. <laughs> I, did I ever feel like, you know, see, okay, I want to address this real quick, by Please. the way, since we're talking about this, um, and I'm only talking about this because I got into an interview and I, I don't know if I didn't have enough rest the night before, but I was offended that the lady was like, well, when did you come out? And I'm like, well, when did you come out? Like, I was born on January 16th. <laughs> why do gay people have to come out? Like, why did I didn't know what that meant for me to say, like, I'm gay. But I was fearful of that because I, I watched um, Oprah with my granny every day at four o'clock. I'll meet you. Um, I loved it. And I love Oprah. If yes. you're Oprah, if you're listening, you know I'm a huge fan. Um, but I remember hearing the word homosexual in church and Oprah and I thought, oh my God, this could potentially be me. And so, but I did have to eventually say, I am gay. And my granny was so funny. Um, at 19, I said, I was able to admit this. It was the, probably the most courageous thing I've ever done. Um, well, up to that point, because that's a big deal for a gay person back then. Back Nowadays, then. it's like the, 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 gay, the gay kids are the cool kids. And I love that. Um, well, I say it because I feel it's a term when, you know, especially probably our generation where people are not openly because they're scared of their family or friends church. or being yep. church or being judged. So... When I say come out, come out of the closet, meaning I don't care. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. <laughs> yeah. Here I am. I'm Take coming out. Baby. So I yeah. wish I had that attitude I because I, I didn't know well, if I fully I'm cared. just saying it's a term. I feel that's that's a term coming out like out of the closet. I feel it's... it's. But I, I, I can so see if he's like, why do I have to? Right. <laughs> right? No, well, I get some I, people you're, I feel you're, you're, don't ever, like you said, aren't true. in it. And some people are in it and scared to get to this out. Day. You you're know? absolutely yeah. right. And so, I, I think for me, I think when I say I, I don't think I was ever in because I was very effeminate. Like my grandmother told me, right. Justin, <laughs> I prayed for you. And when your mother birthed you, I looked into your eyes and I knew I would love you for the rest of your life. And I would love Aww. whoever you chose to love. I, I knew I knew this. We knew <laughs> we knew at 15, Aww. 16, 17, even though I had a girlfriend. You did uh, have a girlfriend. I did. I did. Ooh. I really I really I really tried and you knew, I but you did it really like 
No. <laughs> well, I here's the weird thing. I remember 17 having sex with a woman and um with her and I enjoyed that and that was like fulfilling and but I knew I told her first. I was like I think I'm having like gay tendencies <laughs> and this is before like you know it was like being bisexual at that time was like oh you're lukewarm you'll be spit out you know it's like or that's just the cop out like um i didn't there's i love that the world nowadays is like oh wow it's like you know you were either this or this okay check a box <laughs> and so that was like that was a lot that was a lot for me to finally say like i am gay i'm gay okay so everyone you know i'm gay um, I remember watching Philadelphia and it traumatized me. And I was like, I don't know if I want to be gay with Tom Hanks. It scared me so yeah. much. Um, and the AIDS. yes, and it was, it was a lot. So I thought, oh my God, does this mean I'm gay? And this could be me. It was just, it was a lot for someone like me who, who I didn't necessarily that's... have a, um, we, well, we didn't have the phone and right. we didn't have a, a, a knowledge. No. And so um, I'm very also blessed that I had a gay uncle um, oh, really? who was like my everything. But he lived in New York. So he would like he would he would like bounce in the picture in and out. And I just I loved what he did. I was very thankful for um, even five minutes. Um, and, you know. I found that once I said it and just, okay. I remember the funny part of this coming out, though. When I told my granny, we did have to go to my folks' home. But, like, the <laughs> holiday is me, like, being gay. <laughs> and oh. um, it was Thanksgiving. Wow. And my grandmother, she opens the screen door. And my grandmother is the definition of, like, a quintessential Southern woman. I mean, the hair is always coiffed. She always had her rouge on and her nails were done, okay? And she was the finest in church because my granny was a busybody. She knew everybody's tea and business. And she would sit in church and read. She would, Justin, look at her over there with that red lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> she is a homeworker. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know what the fuck that meant, but I'm like, I can tell. <laughs> and I would just instigate my granny. It was so much fun. And then the, cut to the lady. They always loved my granny. She, they, Hi, Marion. How are you? It's good. I'm good, baby. How are you? How's your husband? <laughs> oh, he's good. And my granny, but she was a wild lady herself. My granny <laughs> got on my like heart. a character. She, I'm, I am my granny. That I am. My, I, I'm telling you, the apple did not fall far. I am my granny. I loved her. I loved, she was a wild lady. Got on a Harley Davidson. She said, I met a man. And I just, I loved that woman. And um, so back to being gay. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, my granny opens the door on Thanksgiving and she says, well, it's official. Justin is gay. He's all the way gay. <laughs> and Like I, everybody knew. I'm right. But you just, <laughs> finally we can talk about it. You know, we had to do that. It was like, okay, it's official now. And I got the stamp. I'm gay. Okay. I maybe might be going to hell. So and how my, old are you right now? At, at this, this point, point, I'm probably like now 19, 20 in a very awkward phase. And you're already into dance, though. You're oh, dance was my dance. whole life. Yeah. Dance actually probably saves my life because where I was so awkward, <laughs> um, I remember I remember going to dance. And one time, one of the teachers saying, Justin, is there a mom or dad? And I was like, no, not. I, I stayed with my granny. I was young at this point, but I was back and forth. And um, can your granny come to class with you one night? Well, she, you know, she's kind of busy, but she'll pick me up. And uh, she said, well, tell your granny just to say afterwards. And my teacher said, Justin is so gifted. And it was the very first time I'd been told that I was good at something. Aww. And... Um, I, I remember this. I remember the scene. I remember what people had on. I was a very, very creative kid um, with a it's wild imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember the teacher saying, like, Justin probably potentially has a future in this. But that didn't mean anything to my grandmother. It's like college was for rich people. It was like, okay, you graduate high school, you get a job. You work. Uh, yeah. And so... I, I do remember that it being so much like where I was too shy to talk to other people. I could express myself through gestures or through movement um, without even really knowing um, if any of that makes sense. But, um, yeah, it's like that 
charade of the coming out was it was a lot. Um, but you know what? And then my granny, when she walked in on Thanksgiving, the funniest part of that whole scene, she's like, and if anybody's got a motherfucking problem with it, I'll be sitting right over here. Come talk to me. <laughs> and and my grandmother, she hated my father. I mean, she hated him from jump. So she was looking for a reason to get rid of on his your ass. Side? Does your grandma on your mother's oh, side? Oh, yes, absolutely. So my gay uncle is, right. um, you know, her child. Okay. And so she was oh. looking for a reason to get rid of my dad. And I was going to give her one. There you so, go. Yeah. That's awesome. So what did your grandmother and mom think of when you had the studio? Were they so proud of you? What did they think? They were, but I'll be very honest. I don't know if they fully understand. My mom came to her very first show, I think, at 10 years Oh, wow. the studio. Yeah, I know that's this is probably very hard for you. Your mom's been, she's such a huge part. Yeah. And she just, and you know what, at one point, I think when I was like younger, I had like a little bit of animosity and like, not, I just, I, I see kids with their parents so supportive and I needed, I needed that. Mm -hmm. I was a child that needed that. And, um, but obviously I, in the end, I'm like, okay, maybe I did. And I was able to, figure it out but she said i justin i had no idea wow. that you were doing all this because the parents would bring me flowers right and i never got flowers at a recital as a kid like and that's a big deal you it know a big deal yeah but it, especially think if you were you were never one you never got that it wasn't yeah. until i taught dance that i got flowers that is and so crazy how this all comes she's like i circle. can't believe like you do all of this like <sighs> Wow, you're actually talented. I was like, "Yeah, mom, thank you." <laughs> but here's the thing: I, the older I became, the more I realized. Like, I mean, she was just playing the hand that she was dealt. You know, yeah. she come from a broken family. Um, her father was shot and killed when she was young. My granny went crazy, but my granny made it for with with what she had with her grandchildren. You know, but there was that childhood trauma, mm -hmm. you know, and back then people didn't talk about that. No. Mental health wasn't a thing. Right. You know, it was like you just sweep it under the rug. You go to church, you pray about it and you keep it moving. Right. You know. Wow. So you're so you're 21 now when you get your dance studio. And when was it that you started and how was it that you started going into drag? So, so I went to. OK, so, yeah, here we go. I went to my very first gay club, 20 years old. 1920 right right around that time and oh, oh my I, I mean god I, this was a lot for me to take in you know because oh. i was like wait a minute there's other gays like there was a lot of us <laughs> <laughs> well think about it I, I grew up in mesquite like i said i had a pager a beeper yes. at 19 you know it was like what I, I mean, if you had a pager at that time, you were big time. You so were big time. Know, when I, mean, I got that prime code phone, yeah. it was over. All right. You had the code and everything. Yes. <laughs> and so like when I'm like there on Oak Lawn and I'm like walking into my first club with my friends, I'm like, oh, my, this is uh, this is this is a lot for me to take in. And we went into the Rose Room Theater and my I, I felt like Alice, like I fell down a hole and was in Wonderland. And my little did I know that that room that night would forever change my life wow. because i said what is this like larger than life character it's like 10 foot tall i'll never forget and my friend's like that's a drag queen i was like a who <laughs> a what what is a drag queen and i'm I thinking to myself this is got to be illegal i mean I, so, something is something i just didn't i couldn't wrap my head around it but i was so compelled uh, I found it so compelling and I was so intrigued that I would just stand in the back. I, I found myself frequenting the Rose Room, um, even without my friends. I would just stand in the back and I would what? just giggle to myself. I thought this is so funny. But what I what I admired about this drag queen was the amount of power that one person could have over an entire right. audience, an audience filled with happy people. And um, I just loved it. And I thought wow, this is like the ultimate bravery right here. Like this person is like, this is this is a character. And I remember like watching uh, Mrs. Doubtfire and Tu Wong Fu and like, I, I was I loved Patrick Swayze and um, God rest his soul. And um, I, I, oh, when I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show, oh my oh, gosh, yeah, right. oh my gosh, it's a sweet transvestite. And um <laughs> So it was like I was seeing this live and I was mesmerized. And then so let's fast forward. I would uh, I would wait by the curtains for the queens to come out. And I was I felt like I was at the theater. It was a cabaret, you know, great performance tonight. I was just that young little gay that was platinum blonde hair. 
Um, yeah. Did you ever think I want to do this? I thought <clears throat> one night I'm leaving. Like I said, I, I just I, I got so into it. And um, on the door I was I was exiting was a sign that said, um, this Thursday night, like open stage talent night, amateur night. Uh, yeah, and I tell my two gay friends, because I had two. I had two. And um the only two in Mesquite or <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, hold on. I was like, you guys, I this is this is has to be my calling. Like I want to enter this, and they're like, "You don't know anything about drag." I'm like, "I don't, but I'm gonna figure it out." But you can dance, you can perform. Yeah, so and so like, like Thursday night came, and now we're gonna talk about being cur courageous because yeah, little like, Justin, I mean, you have to do your makeup. Oh, your wigs, like, like, what, what wig? And, what and wig? Probably, where, had, oh. where was I gonna buy a wig? With what money and where? I I, I took my platinum blonde hair and I swooped it over, <laughs> and I say all of this in my um live. Um, I I'm fat. I'm I'm, I'm jumping way far ahead, but. Um, I had a whole run on the West End, um, which is like London's Broadway, and it was about my life. And I, I best talk show about ever. this scene. It was the best show, <laughs> best ever. show we ever. Went to the show. <laughs> Insane. And and I talk about the scene where it's like I'll never forget it, and I get giddy every night. I get so happy because I was such a, a happy person and um I I didn't have a wig so I like swooped my platinum blonde hair over and I borrowed my sister's butterfly clips and I like <laughs> put clips in my hair and I wore my little jazz high neck leotard and I strutted into the rosary theater and that makeup, cover girl makeup. makeup well cover girl not covering all this boy <laughs> but I, I I gave it a go and I I I I I actually didn't have a drag name. I turned my music in a little CD, a compact disc for you young what song? people. What song? Yeah. Do you remember the first song? Um. Oh my gosh, I don't. Oh. I can almost probably guarantee it was Paula Abdul, Cold Hearted Snake. Oh, that's a good and one. remind me to tell you guys about this that Paula just sent me a video. I'm going to show the video. Up. She sent me a video two days ago oh. because her wow. makeup artist right now is working with me. Okay, but I'm jumping Can we ahead. also remember that then there was no YouTube to even learn makeup? Yeah. So yes. No makeup off. tutorials. There was none of that. <laughs> Nothing. There was no guide. There was no crash course, no handbook. Here I am. And I walk in and I hand my CD to the camp EMC and she's like, uh, okay, uh, well, hello. And I was like, well, hello. My name is Justin Johnson and I'd like to enter tonight's like open stage talent show. She's like, Okay, Justin. <laughs> well, honey, what's your drag name? And I was like, well, I haven't gotten one just yet. I'm still workshopping that. <laughs> She's like, well, doll, you got about two seconds. <laughs> and I didn't think like a half of one. I looked right at her and I said, ma'am, my name is Alyssa. And she said, Alyssa, of all the fucking creative. <laughs> I'll never forget this. I was so crushed. <laughs> of all the fucking creative names you can be. You want to be an Alyssa? And I said, oh, well, ma'am. Of course, there's always a story. I was like, ma'am, I, I I, just, Who's the Boss was my favorite television show <laughs> as a child. And I love Alyssa Milano, um, which I did get to meet her. MTV surprised me with her. Oh, oh you did? No, it was, it was so iconic. Yes, they surprised me with her. I was on this, like, cooking with Jade from Little Mix. And um, they, she's actually heard me say this the about story. her for years and um there i was telling jay because she's like oh that's so awesome and i said yes I've, i i just i've always i remember being a little like young gay going if i ever was a woman i'd want to be just like Alyssa milano on who's, on who's the boss on who's the boss on who's the boss of course <laughs> on who's the boss <laughs> you gotta say yes. that <laughs> on who's the boss yes that's all i knew right and um she popped up on the screen Oh, that's it so was really great. cool. It was really cool. Uh, but so that night I went on stage, I did my performance, and I actually won the talent night. That's you insane. did. And so I had to come back the next week as the special guest. You had to. You oh, had to, yeah, because that, that was won. a part of it. Yeah. yeah. And well, the rest is her story. And her so story. Her story. Yeah. So how did Edwards come? So I met um, Lakin Edwards, and um, who was w one of uh, the big pageant queens in Texas, and um, you know they would s the, the the like the big time queens would sometimes watch the amateur show, and um, I would stay after, and I would see Lakin come out, and I would say, "Your performance was great tonight. Thank you." I, I just it's so funny now because I was like. 
that gay, that kid. That would, <laughs> it was very inspiring. Thank you for sharing your work, and I appreciate you. Like, oh, and, and, and and most queens are like, girl, <sighs> it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. Miss Thing, carry this fucking bag to my car. <laughs> so I would be like, absolutely. So I'm like, now I have a job, okay? But um, Lakin said to me, you're very talented. You're very charismatic. And I was like, oh my, thank you. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Um, and she was like, I would love to like help you. Oh my gosh, in what way? But I remember, uh, so I took her up on the offer. I went to her house. Oh my gosh. Talk about a boot camp, drag boot camp. She was like, you're very hyper. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm just a very passionate person. <laughs> so she was like, you can't come to my house with your friends. Cause I brought my good Judy, my little bestie. And I was like, I apologize. Okay. And she really just started helping me. Um, and then Lakin after winning Miss Texas, getting very close to Miss America, she said to me, you are going to be the biggest queen that's ever come out of texas oh. and i didn't understand that but i understood that and um fast forward uh me and lakin jesse is his name he moved on from drag into corporate very successful movie support of art um, i actually was just there with him and he said do you remember me telling you oh my god i wow. always knew i always knew and Justin, I'm so proud of you. And Aww. so when she like quit drag, she's like, you have to pass on. You need to, you're the legacy. Right. You're, uh, you're my legacy. And wow. Wow. you have made her so proud. I'm sure. Yes. It's like, and, and it's so funny. Now we just laugh and he was like, he, our lives were very parallel. Do you remember Rodney's dancing zone? Yeah, that's where, that's where I she did. Did. Marcella. Yes. yes. Rodney was Jesse's choreographer. Oh, our no lives were way. that parallel. Oh my goodness, what? Yes. Wow. The year that Rodney passed was working yes. with Jesse, with Lakin. Choreographed every he, one of his award-winning talents. He would always talk about yeah. choreographing for yeah. the Rose Room. Yeah. And he would say because... Very close to my drag mother. It, w the world is so crazy, the universe, because... Oh, that gives me like goosebumps. Yes. Yes. That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Yes. I remember asking him why... Does he ever go to like conventions or whatever to... Mm -hmm. to keep learning about choreography and he yeah, said oh, no i go i the rose room that's all i need <laughs> goes to drag so, shows so yeah so, so rodney is where i danced and my mom would drive me so far just to go to the studio and he unfortunately like he was our director so he was like who justin is for his studio who i was for my kids and then he he passed away oh suddenly. God. Unfortunately, suddenly. suddenly and, and we were in the, and it was in a time where you're in the middle of, if you know dance, you're in the middle of kind of competition, like right before, before it starts. It and so we're crushed. I mean, what do we, we have nothing. We have no director. And at that time you didn't have like four or five other staff members. Really. No, and I think it went to E-World, right? That was my mom's that studio. Was my, okay. With my, Erica. My mom opened it. I opened it for the kids. My heart Are was you broken. You didn't I never know that. knew that. Mm -hmm. My mom opened it. I knew it. Erica. I mean, yeah, so. Erica Vale, yeah. Marcella, I'm... you know what? Then I have a VHS I probably should give you. What do you, do you have? I have a video, you know a recital of Rodney's Dancing Zone. I'm sure. And Erica, yeah. it, I remember they were doing If I Wasn't the, the, If by Janet Jackson. Oh, when they wore the rat with Rodney? Yeah. Uh -huh. Rodney? I have it. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but they... I, you know, I looked up to Rodney so much. I yeah, did. we did too. And he just was so, and then my mom felt so bad for us because we were dancing in um, bingo, halls. bingo halls. We were dancing in the lobby of hotel rooms. We were dancing in parking lots. And so at the time, my mom and dad, I think at the time her dad had a ankle monitor because all the all the mafia stuff started coming out but i don't think i realized what all that meant at the time i mean we used to have a lot of money so i was like yeah. well these poor kids i gotta do something for them so she opened and it. erica was i mean her mom karen was like well erica can teach so i was like i know nothing about dance studios so i just opened a studio for them well, how weird what a life lesson Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! And see how the world is like so <laughs> That's so crazy. It was so weird for Jesse to tell me like, Justin, do you know? I was like, oh my, I idolize Rodney. I just I remember seeing him at competition, 
just was not afraid to be his authentic self. And I admired that. I was Mm -hmm. like, I wish I had that skill set, that that gut to just be me. Um, And when he was very, I think it inspired me too when I had my studio. If you like, I think it's the same. Like when the kids were competing, it was an honor. So I would get dressed up. It was like, you didn't go because that's what Rodney did was always put together and proud of his kids and we had to all be perfect and Mm -hmm. yeah and pretty much so yeah (laughs) i mean that was the studio yeah Yeah. that was it but it was like real entertainment and i loved it i loved Mm -hmm. it oh small world how crazy yes what a small world (laughs) so um now you're doing drag I'm doing and drag. I need to know when winning you get that. Winning drag competition. I, 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 I won the Thursday night. I kept doing the Thursday night. Fast forward, Lakin said, listen, if you want to continue on with this, honey, if you want to get a spotlight, the way you do it is you need to be in a pageant. And I remember watching pageants as, you know, a young um, kid, like with my granny, Miss Universe comes on television yes. and all this. And so like a pageant. <laughs> for like gay people <laughs> whoa 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 tell me more where do i find information and the next thing i know i'm slung up in miss texas my very first year this was 2000 well, i won miss texas in 2004 so this pipe was 2002 i mean I, I had to have been a baby i was a baby queen i had braces I baby queen. <laughs> and I, I went i went into the pageant and uh fun fact um i made the top 10 my very first year which is unheard of but i didn't lip sync the words and my talent and i remember the judges were like you were so talented why didn't you lip sync and i said that's not my talent i was doing an interpretive you know oh. piece and they're like right but you need to lip sync the words <laughs> and so i took their notes i came back lip synced the words and was third runner up the next year wow. tied the uh, uh i won my fifth attempt tied the fourth year wait third year i won my fourth time and then i won wow and what? then i went on to win miss america and got dethroned and uh no i, I it, you know and i'm the vanessa williams of drag and so <laughs> uh, but unfortunately my dethroning was very different i remember the owners were like we feel like your dance school is um your first priority and i said it is so i confirmed that and um there was no scandal no gel no ankle <laughs> monitors and no I'm, I'm not judging you know what i mean i come from all of that and there was no sex tapes i mean i kind of wish there was <laughs> um but it was just one of those things where they're like, we don't think you're actually, you're a good fit. And I was like, but wait a minute, I won. Yeah. I won almost every category. Like I won, I earned that. Yeah. And it actually, once again, a trick of fate. It worked for me and I, I never went online. I never bad mouthed anyone. Um, <clears throat> I actually remember the internet being like a thing at this time. And I just logged off. I logged off and didn't turn the computer back on for months. You logged off of MySpace? <laughs> oh my gosh, the top eight, right? The top eight friends. I did log off of MySpace, but so I logged off, and um, just like I learned to do my whole life, is like, you know what? You make the best of it. I did. I picked up the pieces. I won Miss All American Goddess like eight months later. And, um, you know, then the next thing I know, I'm on Drag Race. And it's a story. It's a story because let me tell you how I got on Drag Race. So Shangela got on there and she's like, you have to go on there. And, um, I was like, I could never go on TV and tell the world that I do drag. Like, I don't know. Because here's the thing. At this time, it, drag wasn't celebrated like mm. that. It was kind of a little weird in the gay community as I, well. I really feel that RuPaul actually made that possible for... Pioneer. Talk yeah. about a pioneer. I mean, and I have so much respect for that human. Like, so much admiration, respect. I I have yet yeah, truly, and I'll, I'll tell you. You better work, girl. Yeah, girl. That's just I turn mean. to the left and yeah. the right. But um, I I don't think it was not cool. Like people, gays were not dating drag queens and like all of these things, which that never bothered me because I was not trying to date. But um, I uh, they I I just knew. If I go on this TV show, everybody, all my students, their families are going to know and they're going to think weirdly of me. And when I talked to the casting people, they were like, because I was like, audition. I don't know. Audition. They can, <laughs> they can Google me, honey. I've been Miss USA, Miss America. Uh-huh. I am the all-American queen. And, um, you know, so they Googled <laughs> and they're like, Alyssa Edwards, dethrone, dethrone, dethrone. So they're like, wait, wait, tell us. And I was like, uh. 
I know you did not call my phone to talk about no dethroning. Oh. Ma'am, I want every single category. I'm like slaying this and not even knowing it. That it's an interview. And the producer was like, you know what? Pause. Hold on. <laughs> Let me put you on hold for a second. Can you start? Let's stop this recording for a second. They got back on the phone. They're like, Justin, honey. You are the queen. And so um, the lady brought up the person that actually took the crown. Uh huh. And the, but that was the first alternate that fulfilled her duty. And when she brought her up, she was like, who is this Coco Montrese? And I'm like, I don't know him. <laughs> Being very shady. So I think I casted both of us. Because the producers were like, we want to pump the brakes on you for this season. We want to pump the brakes. But we, we just, can you please, like, understand that you are amazing and we want to work with you in the future and I didn't know what the hell that meant so I was like I didn't care I had a jazz class to go teach yeah. so I was like that's fine um, and I was literally flying out to go film so fun fact for all of you UT people that was season four season five comes around they're like you were the first on our list oh and Coco Montrese gosh. was there so I'm there in the workroom and Coco walks in and I'm like <laughs> This is our first time seeing each other since the big oh, gay shit. scandal being dethroned. <laughs> and it was like the face crack of the century. So we, you know, Coco is a, a Martin is a friend of mine. And we were friends before uh, Drag Race. We were friends before winning the pageant, losing the pageant, dethroned and all that. And we'll be friends after. But like any friends that are like brothers, you know, slash sisters. It's like we both got big egos, big attitudes, big hair and big personalities. <laughs> and like we go at it but we love each other, have mutual respect. And it worked out. Season five, they named me the breakout star. Um, Randy, if you're listening to this, I appreciate you so very much. Who owns World of Wonder was like, we're making a spinoff of this person, this this character, creature, human, and queen. And um, the next thing I know, I'm filming this YouTube series that would be their very first uh, queen series that launched the WOW Report, the World of Wonder uh, streaming network. And it was just me sitting, talking about nothing, going on my but first day. it's date. so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like... crazy. I'm talking to myself. There's no one in the room. It's a body mirror <laughs> and a Red Bull and a camera. And I'm just talking. Girl, yeah, but you... it's so funny. <laughs> I love it. Well, actually, fun fact. I haven't announced this, but we're rebooting it. You are. Oh. They've upgraded the streaming system. And Randy's like, we have to reboot this. This was where we all started. Yeah. We're rebooting. I'm shooting in two weeks. <gasps> and, Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. So I'm very excited. Uh, but this show, people started watching producers. And um, that's where Dancing Queen came about. Um, one of Netflix's reps was like, what? is this didn't actually see me on drag race until oh, after a list they saw a list of secret, secret first, first and was like where is this drag queen from texas oh get this person on the phone and we um there, randy was like i've got to build a spinoff around you it happened here i am with you guys 300 guests later and oh my gosh that was a long story <laughs> but also 